Hey folks, I know many of you are interested in urban survival and urban search and rescue. So today I wanted to teach a skill based on that, uh, something that might be useful just in the event of an emergency. I'm going to teach the system that FEMA uses to mark doors in search and rescue operations. Now this may be something that you want to take back to your team, um, people you work with in, in disaster preparedness situations and utilize yourselves or it may be just something that you want to be able to recognize in case we ever do encounter one of these situations and you see these markings on doors you know what they mean because uh, you don't ever want to be lacking for knowledge in an emergency situation. Now this system was established by FEMA but under the incident command system pretty much any group that would be responding to a disaster type scenario whether that's local sheriff's department national guard search and rescue teams local police uh, even volunteer teams are all taught this system and it's become somewhat of a standard recently and anybody who would be responding and searching um, for lost persons or evacuating people in an emergency situation would use this system. So I want to teach you how to recognize it and what it means. This video is also very different from my normal style of videos where I'm up front talking to the camera, but as this is a system of markings and, and literature really, I felt the graphical nature kind of required sort of an infographic style video. So based on the response to this video, it will determine if I kind of use this style going forward but I hope this is helpful and I hope you can learn something. Let's get started. So anytime an emergency search and rescue team enters a building or a structure, the first thing that they're gonna do is put a slash mark on the door. A lot of times you'll see this on a door, a lot of times you'll see it on a nearby wall. Usually it'll be somewhere where it can be identified from the street or from an entryway or from the approach of that building. So the first thing I'll do is put this slash mark and what that's essentially saying is, hey, we're here. Somebody is entering this building. So if you see a building that just has one mark on it, you know that somebody has entered that building but has not come out yet. After making that initial slash mark just to say, hey, we're entering the building, the next thing a team will do is put the date that they entered that building just so anybody who sees that marking will know on what day this building was searched. And then after the date, they will put the time that they entered that building. So in our example here, the rescue team is entering January 1st, 2015 at nine in the morning. Now, some teams are taught to put the time and date markings after you exit the building. Um, so basically when the search is completed, that's when the, ti the time and day will be noted. It's generally more accepted to put those on the door or entryway when you enter the building, just because if something goes wrong and you don't come out, people at least know how long you've been in there. Or if somebody drives by and, and sees a mark and says, oh, somebody's in there, they know, wow, somebody's been in there for three hours versus just somebody's in there. And you'll see as we continue on through this that there are many of these markings that would have kind of an ideal order or an ideal timing but even if they're done out of order, you can still gather a whole lot of information from them. Because really in a disaster situation, it's easy to forget the order in which something needs to be written down or just mix something up. But regardless of order, you'll still be able to tell essentially what's going on. Now at this point, the team will go ahead and enter the building and begin their search. Whether they are looking for something specific or they're just looking for people to be evacuated or survivors, or they're even just trying to mark just hazards and dangers or resources in the area, they'll go ahead and enter the building and conduct their search. As soon as they exit the building after they've completed their search, they'll go back to the marking they started and put another slash mark, now making a big X. So this is how you know that the building has been entered at what time it was entered and that the team has now left the building. In addition to marking that they have now left the building, they will also leave an indicator of who was there, who searched the building. So if we're in Texas and we're say in San Antonio and San Antonio Police Department searched this building, they would leave a mark that says SAPD. So you know that that search um, began at 9 a.m. and was concluded and it was San Antonio Police Department that concluded the search. You'll also see an additional marking um, 
here we'll just do one slash one that's a more specific designator as to who did the search. So this might be precinct one, search and rescue team one. Uh, a lot of times in military, you'll actually see either a platoon or a squad indicator, something like that. But this says not only what organization searched it, but what specific team actually was there. Most search and rescue teams are actually instructed to make this mark as soon as they make the time and date marking. So you know not only what time the building was entered, but, but who is currently in there. So if you're to drive by while somebody's in there, you say, oh, San Antonio Police Department is in that building. Now this varies department to department just because some departments don't necessarily want you to know who is in the building. And I've noticed this just by how different courses are taught. Um, sometimes they want you to know exactly who's there because that's very helpful information. And sometimes the, after they've completed the search, then that's when they'll let you know who did the search. So we'll go back to our illustration of a completed search by San Antonio Police Department. The next marking that will be recorded is a personnel marking. It will record any casualties or any people who were found in the building at all. So say you entered this building and you found three live people who were evacuated and one dead body. Uh, this is the marking you would leave. Now a lot of times these markings for a little bit of privacy and so it's not completely obvious to everybody will be slightly more discreet. It might say 3L slash 1D or it might just say 3 and then 1DB. Now if you know that this quadrant of the marking is marking live people evacuated from the building and dead bodies found or injured parties found, you can pretty much put together what those uh, initials or abbreviations would mean. So after marking casualties or people evacuated from the scene, we've completed three out of the four quadrants of this graphical illustration. So the next thing that you will see search and rescue teams mark is any hazards in the area whether that's something like a natural gas leak or wild dogs or flooding or electrical wires. It's basically any hazards that would be presented to anyone else entering that building so that any follow-up teams aren't going in blind so that they have some idea of what to expect based on the intel gathered by the first team. So after all the hazards are marked, really we've completed this marking so that anybody walking by or driving by or just kind of conducting a survey of the area can look at this building and know pretty much exactly what happened here. They'll know that on January 1st, 2015, San Antonio Police Department uh, Precinct 1, Search Team 1 entered the building at 9 in the morning. They evacuated three living people. They found one dead body and in their search they encountered dogs and they encountered glass that might be hazardous. So just with this marking, uh, a lot of people wouldn't understand it, but now that you know how to read this thing, there's a whole lot of helpful information uh, that you can just quickly glance at and really know the situation of what is inside this building. Now this whole process is usually considered to be part of they call it WADA, that's Wide Area Disaster Assessment. That's just looking at what damage was done to what buildings, and this is specifically the part of WADA that, that is the instructions you are to use when entering a building or entering a structure. Now, after the emergency has either finished or the Wide Area Disaster Assessment is complete or the first responders are pulling out, whatever the case, that the emergency is essentially declared over, teams are supposedly supposed to go back and cross out all these markings just so that other teams know, oh, we're not looking anymore. It's done, it's over. And so they'll cross out um, with another X through all four quadrants, just so you know, situation over, this is no longer relevant information. Now, a lot of times this is very easily neglected really, because when you're pulling out your troops, when you're no longer searching an area, you're not gonna invest the manpower to go back and just cross off all these little marks you made. So you can look at pictures from Katrina, you can probably go down to New Orleans today and see these marks still on buildings. Uh, they're always made when entering a building, 
but very rarely are they actually crossed off like theoretically they are supposed to do. Personally, I have trained in the past with search and rescue teams and found information like this to be very helpful. Whether it's something you want to take back and encourage friends and family members to use in any search situation uh, where you're going to be searching buildings or searching for missing persons, it could be of help. But it could also be of help if you're ever in some sort of mass disaster situation and you're quickly just trying to figure out what's around you, what's happening. If somebody leaves one of these marks on the door, you don't have to go check it out yourself. You at least have some general idea of what was in that building and what was already found. So I hope this is helpful and I hope it's something that you can learn from and incorporate into your knowledge for emergency preparedness.